What's up guys, I'm BTC. A new milestone has been reached in Overwatch. A player has surpassed level 6,000. He's the highest level player in the entire world, Tree Boy Dave. Alright guys, so here with me today is Tree Boy Dave. He is the highest level player in the entire world. And even second place is still quite a bit behind him. And most of the other competition is hundreds or thousands of levels behind him. So I gotta ask you, did you start out with trying to be the highest level in the world as a goal? Or is it something that just kind of happened? Well, I never really set out to be the highest level. I'd already always been good at leveling up in games and playing them a lot. Um, I never expected to be the highest. Um, it's just something that ju did just happen on its own. I've been setting myself goals for playtime and uh, on various heroes, and uh, it just happened that way. But now that you're basically king of the pile, king of the hill, uh, do you plan on staying there for the foreseeable future? I don't have any plans to stay there, but I probably will for at least a year by the looks of it. If someone else ends up overtaking me, that's fine because highest level is not something I ever planned for. And it's okay if someone else takes it off me. And how many hours a day do you end up playing? Um, well, I stream for nine hours a day and it's Overwatch every day. So it's nine hours minimum of Overwatch every day, um, but it can go up to about 16 hours if I've got a whole day off. So nine hours a day is a full work day, essentially. But in addition to streaming, you also have a job. So what does your normal day look like? Well, I work in the morning uh, four or five days a week, go in, do my work, come back home. It's the kind of job that I can just do and go home when I'm done. So if I get it done quickly, I can go home earlier or if I'm having a slower day for one reason or another, it takes a bit longer, but I'm always done in good time to give myself a bit of a break between work and streaming. And then uh, stream for pretty much the rest of the day. And then an hour after my stream, I go to bed. So I've got an hour in between work and in between stream and bed. So I get some time to do the usual stuff like watching shows or YouTubes or Anything like that. Eating. Yeah, eating. Yeah, that's always important. So do you only play during the live stream or do you play off live stream as well sometimes? Yeah, I'll play off live stream as well because uh, it's nice just to sit and relax and play the game without having to worry about responding to everyone in chat and uh, talking with the community and that sort of thing. I tend to just put myself in offline mode and zone out. Yeah, I certainly understand where you're coming from because there's a need to kind of be entertaining when you're live streaming and certainly sometimes you just don't want to have to deal with it. You just want to be able to play and just focus on what you're doing. Do you ever get just burnt out or bored with the game? No, never have. I understand a lot of people do. I just don't. i um, not sure what it is exactly, but I never really felt the need to stop playing for any reason. I have had breaks occasionally. I went to London for a week at the around the uh, start of the year um, to spend time with a friend who came down from Denmark. And um, I think I only played about three games in the entire week. So <laughs> yeah, I have no problem dropping Overwatch whenever something else comes up, you know? But it's the only game you play, you don't bother with any of the other stuff? Paladins, Fortnite? No, no. Paladins, I tried Paladins for a little bit one day, and it just struck me as a sort of budget version of Overwatch. It, um, it played very similar, but the visuals and the general sort of gameplay were less polished than Overwatch. That's, that's the impression I got. Um, as for Fortnite and PUBG and that sort of thing, I'm not really interested in Battle Royale games. They don't appeal to me. You've spent quite a bit of time on every single character. How many hours do you have, roughly? Um, well, my all modes profile right now has 5,176 hours. 
and that's in all the tracked modes. So that's not counting like custom games and um, untracked arcade modes like Battle Mayhem and No Limits. It's almost 20,000 games won in total. And I've got seven heroes at 300, uh, 300 hours each. And I'm working on getting them all there. So which hero is your favorite? Uh, that would be May. May is a hero I'd... I started maining after I'd done a bunch of time in Mercy. Mercy was my original main. I played a lot of Zenyatta in the open beta weekend or launch. For some reason I went to Mercy when the game did launch and I got almost 100 hours in her before experimenting with other heroes and falling onto May. And I ended up getting a whole bunch of time in May, getting close to 100 hours on her. But I had 100 hours pretty much on two heroes and I thought, why not do the rest of them to 100 hours, you know? So that's what I did. So every single character has a minimum of 100 hours right now. 100 hours in quick play, yeah. In all modes, they have a minimum of 151. What is it about the character Mei that you like so much? Because she's not exactly the most popular. No, exactly. But I think a lot of what I like about her is she's got a lot of utility. Ice Wall is extremely good in a lot of different ways and freezing people <laughs> is a lot of fun as well and um she, she doesn't punish accuracy too much like a lot of other heroes and she just got a buff on the ptr no more fall off on the oh yeah it's not sniper may <laughs> yeah yeah the um zero fall off on her right click is gonna be amazing i already liked sniping Widowmakers with may that was great fun but now it's gonna be even easier so I notice you play a tremendous amount of quick play, but is that your favorite game mode or is it primarily just because it tends to give more XP than the rest? Uh, well, quick play is the probably easiest way of getting quick matches. Um, a lot of the arcade modes have longer queue times and I'm not a big fan of competitive, so I just stick to quick play for the most part. Back when I first hit the silver portrait and the gold portrait, I got lots of comments and people were surprised, asked what level it was and that sort of stuff. I can only imagine that you get even more reactions when people see your incredibly bright, shiny, platinum, multi-star border. How often does it get commented on and what's the kind of ratio between good and bad? Because I know there tends to be a bunch of bad reaction to seeing the big portraits as well. Um, well, it's something I've gotten used to since the beginning, in fact. I remember when I first started playing Overwatch uh, and got my first star, there are a lot of people asking how I got a star on my portrait, right? I don't know if you remember those days, but um, it's it's been quite interesting. Um, as I've been going higher and higher in the portraits, a lot of people trying to guess my level, most of them getting it wrong because they they forget one thing or another. There are good comments and there are bad comments and I'm, I'm not the person to let the bad comments get me down or anything. Um, I'm very um, hard to offend and I take everything in my stride pretty much. So I usually combat the bad comments of humor because that's the best way of doing it in my opinion. And. Uh, yeah, I've, I find the since the endorsement system came in, there are a lot less bad comments, which can only be a good thing, in my opinion. I always thought it was kind of odd. If someone, for example, plays basketball a lot, you wouldn't expect them to just suddenly get drafted into the NBA. But if someone plays a particular video game, there's this assumption that they must be the best in the world just because they play it. And it never really kind of matches up like the top 500 players are you know an incredibly incredibly small fraction of the player base and it takes a tremendous amount of skill to get there and to assume that well you're just going to automatically get there is kind of like assuming you automatically get into the nba and i just never understood that and a lot of the the kind of insults i see like oh because you're high level and you don't have a certain threshold on a rank, then, you know, therefore you must be bad. It just seems to me like it's kind of the lazy insult, right? Like it's the low-hanging fruit 
you don't have anything better to say, so you just kind of do that. Yeah, I've in, I've encountered that a lot. Uh, it's one of the reasons I avoid, avoid competitive, because people take a look at my profile and say, oh, so high level and only this rank, you know? It strikes me that whatever rank I ended up getting, it wouldn't be good enough for a lot of people. So I, that's one of the reasons I quit comp quite early on. The last competitive season I took seriously was probably maybe season two. What was that, Beyblade? Or what? No, I think that was 50%. Zenyatta Discord back then. Good times. Yeah, it's definitely different things for different people. I tend to like more of the competitive side, but I totally understand that someone like you would just want to play and have fun, and that's your goal. Not necessarily to to climb the, the ranks and all that sort of stuff, but to just enjoy your time. And I don't know why that seems to be a bad thing, why someone can play a game derive a lot of enjoyment from it and it somehow looked as if it's you know negative the highest border in the game right now is platinum and i believe it's 2400 so you are way way past 2400 if they were to add new kinds of borders what sort of stuff would you like to see i don't know really i mean maximum border was something i got on the 10th of may last year so i've had this portrait for what is it 14 months now <laughs> so any any new border would be fine with me at this point because it would be a change to a border that i've had for well over a year it's interesting to think about i do think about it every now and then it's n not something that's a priority for blizzard and it shouldn't be there's only a few hundred people at most who've gone over the maximum border that's not a huge amount of the player base so i prefer blizzard to work on stuff that benefits everyone heroes maps modes skins all that kind of thing um but that being said if they did make new borders i would think that my border would look pretty insane right now because i as i'm just over 6000 that would put my border at the 11th border and if it if they're making it so it would be a natural progression that each border looks better than the last one <laughs> i uh i don't know what could they possibly do really i mean after they like the the simple one the obvious one is oh they can go to diamond but after diamond like master is not an actual you know it's not a thing right it's not like yeah bronze silver gold plat diamond you know what i mean but maybe they could add like elements they could be like fire air water earth perhaps a tree based <laughs> portrait of some kind yeah. with leaves and another I'm thinking the uh, the new Arissa skin, where it's kind of like the druid thing. I mean, there's several directions they can go with it. Um, one idea I had a while back was they could make gemstone borders, one for each letter in the word Overwatch, um, based on the starting letter of the gemstone. That would give them nine portraits, and that would be enough to keep me going for a little bit. Blown through most of those already if they did that. <laughs> but... You know, it's a start. One alternative is taking the Diablo 3 route, which is instead of having the border directly linked to level, it's just unlocked with level, and then you can equip whichever one you want. That would allow them to create all kinds of different borders for different reasons. They could um, allow people to get the Overwatch League borders, or the World Cup borders, or character-specific borders, maybe or seasonal event borders. It could be a whole new category of unlocks. Yeah, new cosmetic. That sounds really good, actually. That's a good idea. Yeah, so there, there are lots of different ideas, um, a lot of which I probably haven't even thought of, that they could go down if they wanted to make the border system a little bit better. Or even design your own borders, give people the skills, the, the tools to make their own, like you can in Diablo 3 with banners. Now, one of the things that they just recently added was the ability to hide profiles. 
Do you think, because I've seen this recommended as well, the ability to just completely hide your border? Well, as I said, if they made it so you just unlocked the borders instead of um, them being directly tied to your level, that would solve two birds of one stone, right? You'd be able to equip whatever border you wanted so you could avoid that unwanted attention if that's something that you wanted to do. But that that is something I hadn't thought of, actually, the border aspect of things. Me, myself, I'm happy keeping my profile public because I've worked hard on that thing. So <laughs> I'm not going to hide it from the world. All right, so the last and arguably most important question. Now that we have a genetically enhanced, hyper-intelligent hamster, should Jetpack Cat be the next hero? Um, if Jetpack Cat is Junker Queen, oh, that'd be perfect. <laughs> I don't know about that, but we'll go with it. All right, so if people want to check out more of your content, where can they find you? Um, I stream every day uh, from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. UK time over on twitch.tv slash treeboydave. And afterwards, I upload every stream to my YouTube channel, also Tree by Dave. And my Twitter is Tree by Dave and everything else. Just Tree by Dave everywhere. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you spending some time with me and congratulations on your achievement. Hopefully, once you hit 10,000, Blizzard will have some sort of new portrait system in place. Oh, at least one. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my Discord server. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter. The links for that stuff are down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault. Also, special thanks to all my Patreon supporters for helping to make this all possible. If you'd like to see what kind of cool rewards you can get for supporting the channel, check the links on screen and down below.